Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Company You Keep season finale, a great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So we're immediately picking up in the aftermath of last episode. Obviously, news breaks about the attempt on... Um, David's life, and obviously they were like, there was an unknown female that was with him, obviously, um, everyone in, um, Charlie's family himself included, kind of worried, and he immediately rushes off, and obviously we know that the person in the car with David was Jen, so, obviously Charlie's really happy that, you know, that she's okay, that Emma's okay, um, and it's just kind of like that situation of like, right, McGuire did this and he's not going to stop. And obviously because of her deal with Daphne, that was her way to get Charlie his out. And so he doesn't have to be involved. But for Charlie, it's like, no, someone I care about, no matter where we currently are, you are still someone I loved and care about and you're in danger. So let me help you finish this. But it's not just the McGuire she has to worry about. She's also being told by the CIA because they're trying to make sure she doesn't screw the pooch on this situation. Because now she doesn't trust her own organization because she's like, right. The fact is we ruffled some feathers when we made some connections with like McGuire and it's that guy they met at that CIA like meeting of the spies place and that guy that's willing to make a deal with Daphne and them. He's in a situation where he's kind of pretend, at least what Emma's believing is like he pulled some strings for whatever reason and he got her boss transferred to another job and also um, is the reason why they want to try and flip Patrick. It's just a safe face in their own like on regard so it is a situation of well you're kind of getting attacked on multiple fronts so how do you handle this obviously Patrick isn't too happy about the failed attempt on Emma because not only is Emma still alive you also almost killed a senator the point was to kill Emma to get the heat off of us in fact Connor's done worse and you can see how like Daphne was kind of gloating a little bit it's like yeah this is this is a person you wanted to be your successor you could have had me and I would have ran this operation smooth I wouldn't be betraying you right now if you weren't such a predictable douchebag dad so but it's like all right so now the deal's going to go down but it's kind of going to be hard to get Patrick in the same room admitting he's buying these guns and stuff because hey he's paranoid right now especially with so much heat on him so our trio meets and so so heavily entangled before now, but now they're meeting. All the cards are on the table, and now it's like right. We kind of have to work together with this situation. So Emma's kind of taking some days off, obviously pretending that it's about all uh, the attempt on David's life, and that you know she just needs a break from work, but still tackling this situation. It's just she's relying on Charlie and Daphne. So. Obviously, uh, I, I love that we bring Singh back into the fold and De um, and Emma kind of has to pull on his heartstrings a little bit, like make him feel like he's the only one she can rely on to kind of help her in this regard. It's like, yeah, I kind of burned that bridge, but it's like, hey, help me with this whole situation and the FBI could help take down uh, Patrick. And obviously, Daphne's got a lesson. Um, I've obviously, uh, Patrick doesn't have the biggest confidence but the point is to make his confidence in him even less. It's like, oh, wow, are you really going to let Connor hang out with the boys, potentially get drunk and be the screw up that he's always been right before a major job like this? So Patrick, you want the point was to try and get Patrick to do it himself. Be like, all right, I'm going to handle the job myself. So once again, Daphne and am I tackling this on their respective fronts, kind of trying to make everyone else think it's kind of their give them what they need and put them in a position where they give you what you need. So I thought that was beautiful. I mean, it's, you know, any, I think it's a very clear cut with any little good con men show an aspect, uh, sh show us in the performance that they're trying to give to get what they need from their respective sides in this regard. So I thought that was really interesting, especially how this all also coincides with the Frankie situation, because initially they, Leo and Franny are considering the deal because it's a lot of money, they're not getting younger, and also it means giving up this place. I mean, it's you know a way to kind of get out of the game, go a little legit, which Birdie has her reservations about. I mean, we heard last episode from Birdie that she's comfortable with her life being what it is, so I think that would kind of change a lot of stuff. 
until Ollie found out what Frankie's really up to. It's like he has a redevelopment plan that I, I figured this was going to be the case. Him just magically coming up with that 4.5 mil deal for them. And he's like, oh, yeah, put some fillers out. It's like, no, he was definitely because that was a big question last episode. It's like, is he the one peddling this or is he just, is he really helping us or is he a messenger for someone else? And it turns out there's some investors trying to buy up this block and kind of redevelopment. And it's like, oh, so that guy's trying to burn this neighborhood to the ground and kind of build like some I don't know build, like was it he was building I don't know if it was like some condos and hotel like but this neighborhood wasn't going to be what it was anymore and it's even more of a stab in the back considering who Frankie is he is it's someone that is from this neighborhood this is like his old stopping ground so it's like you're turning your back on the people you knew so they're going to use a twofold situation the situation upstairs, they're going to utilize it to help them with the Frankie situation. And I'm also surprised how things played out considering what they set up with Daphne, where she was considering like, well, there is $20 million in like crypto that's going to be in play when it comes to this whole deal situation. So she's kind of saying like, hey, I could like snatch that up because she especially when she had um, Charlie explain how they were able to, how he was able to pull off that con uh, in the first episode, and she's like, right, fake police raid. Obviously, like, he, like, took the card, made it quickly disappear, and it's like, right, made you see what I wanted you to see. And her, um, she's talking about, like, right, she's thinking about sticking around the neighborhood and sticking around and now and, you know, seeing what she could kind of do for herself post kind of burning her dad's business to the ground so that made me wonder i kind of got vibes like i don't know if, if i don't know if she was really pulling out feelers trying to see if charlie would bite but she was almost sick wanting to stick around and um i don't kai was because she was kind of almost implying like maybe i i get my money but you also get yours charlie like we can't just let like that 20 million sit in like a like an fbi you know um evidence locker or something like that so and I was curious, like, if there was going to be one more con in that manner, but it played out way differently than I thought it would. Because, like I said, I was expecting Daphne to walk away, pull off, like, one final trick. And I was wondering whether Charlie was going to do that or not. But, I, it, yeah, he wants to help out his family, but he's already helping that with the Frankie thing. I don't think he'd go as far as... Because, also, he doesn't want to betray Emma in that regard, I think, especially after everything, so... Especially when those two end up shacking up again later. It was just kind of like the reality of just everything that's happening... Um, how stacked everything is against them, but they want this all to work out. But I think it's also the aspect of, you know, how simple things were. You know, it's like, right, they tried to tell each other the truth about who they were at the beginning, but it's like neither one of them believed the other when they actually told the truth. Of, oh, I'm a con man. Oh, I'm a... I'm a CIA agent. And it's like, right, you try to tell me the truth again when Daphne came after me was coming after me and you know I kind of pushed you away and they just get swept up in the moment again and if, you know and them even having their plans are like oh yeah like we'll go we'll do this we'll do that you know just trying to you know kind of back to where they were at the beginning where they had the opportunity just to stay in like multiple days kind of get their break away from reality and got to be whoever they wanted to be in this moment but Obviously, that moment they had can only last so long because reality sets in and they have a deal to uh, pull off. I even love the switcheroo where they got in a vehicle, the truck blocks away. You're like, that's 100% on purpose. I was like, how are they going to handle this? The car, uh, the truck moves, but it's uh, instead of uh, Emma and Charlie in the car, it's uh, Simon and... Um, and uh, Birdie, and I was like, oh, I really like that. I thought that was really neat. But um, nice little switcheroo, and him being like, oh, I could get used to this. She's like, what, playing, you know, being a con man? He's like, yeah, sure, if you want, you know, obviously being cheeky, so. All the while, Frankie and Leo are drawing, uh, Fr Franny and uh, Leo are drawing, um, uh, Frankie into like a false insecurity thinking like the deal is going through they've accepted and 
they're like drawing it out and trying to make the neighborhood not seem as p appealing. First, like, oh, a needle drops. They're like, is that a needle? And she's like, oh, it has to be for like, that must be for someone's diabetes. I mean, you know, like everyone's getting diabetes this day. And while the like uh, police shootout situation and like obviously they want it to be nearby when the bust happens because it's like, oh, this is kind of a crime ridden neighborhood. Like, oh, my God, all those shots being fired. It's like, yeah, we want to scare them off, not let them think World War Three was happening across the street. So. But uh, some interesting developments during, like, the bust. Patrick gave Daphne the wrong location because they were going to make her take the fall for it. Trying to make it seem like the, the way they can separate themselves from this was make it seem like she was the one that caused the bombing. I wonder what that would have meant when they did accomplish their goal. Like, when the deal was done, what were they going to do with Charlie, considering Charlie and Daphne were kind of a team? But... I guess the plan would be that they were going to probably, like, kill Charlie. I mean, because Connor wants to kill Charlie regardless, so... And especially because he conned, like, not only Connor, but also Patrick. So, I'm sure when it's all said and done, he was... Patrick would have given Connor to go ahead to kill Charlie when, they go, when that opportunity happens. But Daphne gets sent to the wrong location. And I was curious, like, what's going on. The cell phones and stuff, they are were there. At first, I thought, like, oh, do they know about her deal with the CIA? It's like, no... Uh, the plan was to make her take the fall for the attempt on David's life. Obviously, Emma's, but obviously David's the one that caught, um, the, caught the explosion. That's such a weird way to phrase that. But, yeah, that was Connor's plan. But, you know, you also have Daphne being like, right, he's willing to throw me aside, the person who threatens his control over his organization, and you. What about you, his son, who threatens it and everything that he does? Like, what do you think is going to happen? She's like, at the end of the day, it was never going to be you, Connor. It's never even going to be me. Dad was never going to fully give this over to either one of us because it was always going to be his. He was never going to reign. Like, why would he ever, like, truly give control? And especially the way their dad treats him. It's like, yeah, you act like he treats you better than your sister. It's like, I mean, arguably, I'd say because... He, he treats her better because you're his own, like, he tries to say, like, oh, you're his son, you're blood. He still treats you like shit. At least he pushes Daphne away, and, I mean, but he still treats her like shit. I still feel like she gets it better than you do in that regard, but luckily Emma shows up. I was wondering whether or not she's going to have to put Connor down, but she doesn't. He does get shot, but we don't know if that's, like, a, I'd, I'd shirt the, I don't, I don't know if that's a, Oh my god, he, he was in the water, he's dead situation. Because he did get away and make it to the water after getting shot. But that seems like a... Connor's still out there and he's in the wind and he's going to be an issue potentially. Um, especially knowing like, oh cool. I mean, to be fair, he was going to betray her. So like her betraying you first ain't really that much of a deal. I mean, you, you've betrayed her multiple times and screwed her over multiple times. So you were literally about to do the same thing. So her work on the CIA shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. But... Who knows how that's going to play out in the future. Once again, it might be implying like he's dead, but it felt like because they never bothered showing a body, I'd, I'd try and drain that water trying to find his body, but they're probably not going to. My point is just it's definitely going to be a situation of, yeah, he's still out there in the wind and kind of an issue. So I think that's something Charlie might need to be on the lookout for as well. So, But I love, speaking of Charlie, when the deal goes down, he's like, hey, I am, from this point forward, I'm going to tell you the truth. Oh, that guy there, that's the real Brad. It's like, no, I met with him. It's like, no, 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 the, Brad, the real Brad, that's the real Brad over there. Uh, the guy I, I conned you like a couple, like the other day, the other last week or whatever. So I told you going for it, all I'm going to do is tell you the truth because it's like, because uh, Singh had asked like how um, he was, how was Charlie going to get uh, Patrick to admit stuff, and it's like, yeah, just by telling them the truth, and he's like, yeah, um, kind of was like, yeah, things aren't kind of what you think they are, and it's like, oh, yeah, that, that container over there, that's where your guns are, he's like, also, I wouldn't open that container if I were you, it's gonna be full of guns, and the FBI's watching, but he didn't want to listen, because, right, he, he's so, he's like, oh, I'm not gonna fall for it, I fell for that con in the first episode, not gonna fall for it again, Lo and behold, the guns are there. Oh, lo and behold, the FBI's watching. But he's like, oh, no, that's not the real FBI. Who's that? Your dad popped off some shots. The FBI's firing back. Charlie's in the, like, crosshairs of it. Luckily, Emma's there to try and help him out. But Patrick ends up getting to Emma first. And Charlie distracts him enough so that Emma's able to take him down. And he ultimately gets shot and killed. So... 
no flipping him like the CIA at least claimed that they wanted to. So, I mean, there still could have been a thing of, yeah, putting Patrick under their guard and home dude could have used that opportunity to try and use Patrick's, like, connections and stuff like that. Or how that would have all played out if things had actually gone the way the CIA wanted them to. I'd also, for, um, well, I'll circle back to it in a little bit because obviously it's going to be super pre uh, prevalent. But there's another element to this I'd kind of skipped over. Um, either way. Charlie took two, but luckily it was in a vest, so he's okay. Which obviously Birdie's not too keen on like him doing the heroics. It's like I don't want you to be in a situation where you you do that. I also love that powerful speech that Leo gave Frankie, where it's like, right, these type of people you like cozied up with these big time people, but at the end of the day, you're just a means to an end. They convince people, hey, you join our club, and you. Uh, you're kind of a step above where you were, and now, like, you go back to your old neighborhood and you're trying to screw all those people up. It's like, we basically um, chomping at, we're cutting down what we used to be our own neighborhoods for the purposes of trying to get, like, a part of their world, like those big wigs. But it's like, we'll never be that. We'll always be lesser than them. We'll never be in their world, no matter how hard we try. Because Frankie's going to try and justify, like, oh, what he was doing. It's like, I am trying to help out and stuff like that. But it's like, no, you're not. You know, you're just kind of being suckered into all of this as well. Like, this was your neighborhood, and basically you're willing to turn it, turn on it and burn it to the ground. And Leo's like, I'm here, and I'm a fight, and I'm a, I'm a stick with and look out for what's mine. So that was a powerful thing that everyone could kind of get behind that message. I thought it was a beautiful message. We also don't know what to make heads or tails of Daphne because she didn't get the money like she wanted to at the end, but she does walk away. And, like, her dad is dead, and it's kind of like a... Oh, well, uh, it sucks because regardless of it, once again, there's still a part of her that did all this for her dad's love. Uh, you know, a dad she never really knew, a part of herself she really never knew and got to know. So it did mean something. It still cuts deep, you know, but it's like a thing of like, hey, you're going to throw me to the wolves. It still sucks that it came down to this. If only you had seen me for who I really am and valued me for who I really was, we wouldn't be in this situation. But it is what it is. She's moving on. But now what that necessarily means, will she stick around like she told Charlie? Or I don't know. It feels like this wouldn't be the end you see of Daphne. I think you probably see that she probably would stick around and maybe she would go down the more legitimate business wise, considering like she does have the business mindset that she does. So maybe who knows? Once again, Connor's still out there. So she potentially so she might have to watch her back in that regard, not just her Charlie as well. But I was almost wondering how this was all going to wrap up, too, especially with the Charlie and Emma thing. And um, it turns out the person that uh, Emma's kind of suspicious of, that person, because her um, her old boss who got um, transferred to a different job, he actually secretly met with her and was like, yo, um, I'm putting some feelers out trying to figure out what's going on. But, yeah, there's something fishy going on with the CIA and the guy they were kind of worried about, you know, thinking something was up with, turns out he was dealing with a money launderer. And that made Emma go like, well, we can work together, Charlie. Like, we can kind of be partners in this. And you can, um, we can um, make a situation where we make your involvement with the CIA more legitimate. We can work together. We can take down some bad guys. But for Charlie, at the end of the day, for him, it's like, I won't be able to be me anymore. I shouldn't. I don't want to have to change being who I am just to kind of fit this. And he also knows, like, you are who you are, too. That is kind of where you re should remain. And, like, us being on opposite sides of that line, it, it can never work out like that, you know? And it's kind of such a shame if they could go back to being... You know, him being the yoga instructor, her being the rocket scientist, you know? If only they could go back to then, you know, things were simpler then, you know, now that the truth is out there. I mean, it was even something that, the title of this episode is The Truth Hurts, which is a line Daphne said to uh, Connor, but it reverberates throughout the entire episode in so many regards, whether it's the Frankie situation, whether it's... Um, the whole situation of um, things between Emma and Charlie and the, uh, what the truth has kind of done for their circumstances. But also even like how um, Charlie was able to take Patrick down by literally telling him the truth but him not believing it. And, you know, that ended up costing him dearly. So Another element to this episode is David's 
um, situation. Obviously, he stepped out of the race after everything went down. And he was worried that maybe he disappointed his parents by saying all the stuff that he did. But they're like, no, if you, we are kind of proud of, like, we never... We never wanted you to kind of have to be something that you're not. So if we're proud of you, whatever you decide to do, if you want to back out of the race, then we 100% support you and stuff like that. But it turns out when it's all said and done, David does win. And obviously for him, it's like that doesn't matter. As of now that Jen's awake and she's okay, that's all that matters to him. So he ends up, you know, wanting to kind of like who cares about all that? Because once again, there's 10% of you do what you you promise, but then the other 90% of like all of it is just talk and manipulation and just like the grimy stuff side of politics he doesn't like. But Jen suggests like, right, why don't you try and go for one one term? And try it, you know, you have no obligations to anyone. You don't have to listen to what anyone else wants to do. You enact the policies you want to do. You do the good that you want to do without, you know, worried about like, oh, the fallout from it. But then we find out later on from Jen after um, David accepts all of that and decides to accept his one-term position and putting that limitation on himself. We find out that Jen is in fact in play by someone else. It doesn't seem like it's Claire Fox. So now I'm wondering, okay, so was she even a plant for, like, this? is Claire doing this for someone else? Or did, like, even Claire get conned by Jen? She wanted to seem like, she maybe she really pushed herself to be like, no, 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 I'll help out with David. Like, she probably put herself in the forefront because whoever's behind her, I, we don't, I don't know what language she was speaking at the end there. Um... I don't know if that was kind of, I don't know if that was supposed to be like a Russian thing. Like, that sounds like a sleeper agent type of thing. But um, maybe that's not, maybe it's, I, I don't know. Because I was like, I was about to say, not less Claire, that was Claire Fox and that's her mom. But I feel like they would have revealed that if that was the case. The fact is we never saw who her mom was. Makes me think like, I don't know. It could still be a Claire Fox thing, but it feels like it's a separate thing entirely. Because I just wasn't 100% sure about the Claire Fox of like her sincerity to Grace last episode. I was like, I don't know if that was 100% sincere. It seemed like it, but any good con can be that convincing. But I knew something had to be really up because of last. it was the point I made last episode. And David hasn't questioned it. Jen knew that it was a bomb in the car. Once again, how do you know that? There's no way you would know that unless you're like some highly trained person to know that enough. Like the fact is because David didn't cl it didn't click in David's head like, oh, the oh, and I, the car wouldn't start after two cranks. And then I'm hearing the ticket. He wouldn't jump. No one would jump to the conclusion of a bomb unless you have some kind of experience. So there's definitely something off about Jen. Once again, the qu big question being whether or not Claire Fox knows about that, whether that's her actual mom or is that just like I said, the fact is they didn't show her makes me feel like it can't be her mom's got to be someone else. And. I don't know if Claire Fox was doing that person a favor by putting Jen there, or once again, whether she's just as much in the dark. We'll potentially have to wait and see. Um, another storyline element I had forgotten to talk about was um, Emma's partner, um, Agent Mason. Her, um, her thinking this whole thing was BS about the way Emma was kind of being left out high and dry early on so she wanted to kind of follow through on things on her own and saw Daphne go into a bar the same bar that Emma and Charlie went in and so Emma sat down and explained everything so it's like wait so your boyfriend and it's like oh yep it's like when did you find out it's like well when he revealed who he was uh just to stop Daphne from coming after me it's like wow so this has all kind of been happening and it's like well why didn't you tell me it's like I didn't want you to have to choose between like m working with me and your loyalty to the agency, which the way things have been going, she's like, my loyalty is already being tested to the agency, the way they've been handling this. Um, so she's going to be the inside person, especially when Emma confronts her current boss. And it's like, yeah, like a whole bunch of guns are off the street, but she's also like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with the agency. Like the fact is we're in this to stop bad guys. And we're, we were just, I'm supposed to sit on the sidelines and let that all happen. So she quits, but that's a front because now there's going to be a secret uh, group that her, Mason, and their previous boss are in together. They are going to be uh, a secret organization. They're going to be a secret uh, group. Um, keeping an eye on the CIA and it's like, right, we've got to make sure that all this is kept off the books because we can't let anyone trace this back to us. 
And turns out Emma's the one that walked away with the crypto money because now, oh, cool, we don't have to worry about the funding. We get to fund our own. I was like, interesting. That's what I was talking about earlier when I was like, oh, thought Daphne was going to walk away with the money. Emma being the one who walks away with the money is pretty dope, Cause especially because she was working on the car trick that um, that uh, Charlie told her, taught her. And I'm curious, did she specifically do that because she knew Daphne was going to aim for it? So she put it. I mean, they didn't really plan for all that, but an opportunity presented itself in that regard. So any missing money, they'll probably just assume Daphne took it regardless. So, and I love that. You know, uh, Emma's boss is like, right, you still got that asset of yours, which even Charlie and Bertie are talking now that everything's over. It's like that conversation that Leo had, it really sparked something in them that, yeah, they can do what they can, they've always done, but like shift their focus a little bit. That all the jobs they take don't just have to be about money. Like we take down some bad guys, but that's that we, we, we escalate we we run up the food chain of the type of targets we go after we go after the big big wigs the corrupt type of people we take them down and help out people like that are situations like us um you know like shelby our um our people in our neighborhood the people we know that are struggling who who tried to make ends meet you know uh, you know once again leo made that point of like yeah they tell us that we just Pull ourselves up by our bootstraps that we could be just like them. Those type of people that say that and who are kind of from that higher echelon, you know, wealth and corruption. It's like we take them down. So to me, I was like immediately thinking, oh, so that puts Charlie and Emma kind of, this, you know, it doesn't, it's not a full, full partnership, but it is a thing of he still does his thing and, you know, they can cooperate from time to time because I'm sure their targets are going to cross, their, their, their lines are going to cross over and with the targets they're going after. But it is a situation where Charlie's still going to obviously do his thing and Emma's got her secret thing she's got going on. And it's like, yeah, from time to time we can meet at the bar and like have a drink. So not, I don't think it's like a full, full, full partnership, but still it's kind of dope to see where things kind of end off here. I even love like, oh, is that your mark? It's like, yeah, but uh, she's not my type. And looks at Emma and I was like, I love that. That's so cute. Once again, a coming full circle, them being at, where they, once again, in so many regards, but especially the beginning of the show to where they are at the end. I'm also super surprised the Tina thing never came back up. Like, that's a through line that's still kind of out and open that could resurface, you know, if they're, you know, potentially in the future. At the time of me recording this, um... ABC has not announced whether or not the show's coming back for a second season. I really hope so. A lot of stuff I've seen has shown... I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but it seems like this show is a big hit for ABC, but that doesn't always necessarily mean anything. Because then you also worry about, like, cool, it might get a second season, which, one... Second season's getting canceled. Like, oh, it's like, oh, we got this got renewed, and all of a sudden it gets pulled from under the rug, gets pulled underneath like a stump town site type of situation. I mean, there's been other instances instances recently of like, oh, this thing got an early season two, and midway through production, actually we're canning the whole thing. So there's that concern. But also, even if it gets a season two, what does that mean? Like, oh, does that necessarily mean the show will fully have legs? Like, it might be a thing of the show might get canceled after a second season. It's concerns like that, but at bare minimum, I I want us to get a season two. I'd like the show to run for as long as it can, whether that's a four or five season thing. Once again, I want anything at bare minimum to run four or five seasons or however long it takes you to tell the story. You're able to tell it in three, tell it in three. But it feels like this is a show that, once again, can have legs. It could be like a, a four or five season show because I doubt this is going to be. I mean, I guess it also depends. Like if it got a season two, would it be a full season or would it be kind of like the shorter season? It was like now, like 10, maybe 13 episodes in a season two, or would they go like a full 22 episode, or probably not, so if it's like 10, 13 episodes, something like that, I could definitely see like a, maybe like four or five season run, like being able to, you know, be a nice run, but who knows, you know, so, another thing to also consider too, is the writer strike is happening right now, so I'm sure that's going to affect a lot of projects going forward, which, you know, obviously, Every writer deserves to have their livable wages. But it's, you know, so maybe it's going to have an effect on the show. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm sure ABC is looking at all things, the writer strike included, plus, you know, the ratings and numbers for this show. So I do hope it gets to season two. Really, I hope the show gets to keep going for as long as it needs to, to fully tell the story they want to tell. Once again, I do know this is based on a, what is it? 
I believe it's a Korean drama. What was it? Hello Citizen? My Fellow Citizens is the uh, show which, interestingly enough, that show ran for, I think, 36 episodes, but also like Korean dramas kind of run on a longer and and. and Tend to be probably not always, but they usually are like one and done in, in that regard. So I don't know if this was like a two season thing or a one season thing. Actually, looking a little more into it, it seems like it was like a one season thing with forty episodes. So that in itself could be like four seasons of this show. So that kind of goes a little bit with the point I was making. But either way, like obviously, there's still so much more story you could end up telling. So I do hope the show not only gets a second season, I do hope that it continues and once again gets to tell the full story that it wants to tell. I'm also really curious to actually track down um, the show with my fellow fellow citizen, kind of watch it in the meanwhile, just from reading on. Uh, from from it a little bit obviously there's a lot of similarities obviously a lot they quite changed um for uh this american adaptation but like at its heart it's still kind of like that same premise just obviously a lot of the details are tweaked like i said either way fingers crossed hoping for a second uh season i'll be keeping an eye out seeing uh ultimately what abc's decision on that is but really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.